You are listening to American Wag. American Wag. Where the mind is respected and the truth is sometimes detected. to talk about now and I think if there's any reason for you to listen to me it is because I'm prepared to talk about this I woke up this morning about 15 minutes ago and uh, I started like I do every morning with a song in my head uh, and the song was the theme from get smart and uh, if you're my age you remember a show starring Don Adams uh, where he's kind of a bumbling, incompetent secret agent. The title of that show was Get Smart. So hopefully what I have to tell you today will help you get smart. I think what many people are going through right now is very painful. And they want to get to the point where we're past the pain. Uh... And sometimes when you're in pain, you don't necessarily think about the solution. You think about what you want right now. Uh, and sometimes just trying to get that thing right now gets you deeper into the same mess that you're in. And that's what's happening right now in most of America with Americans and the idea of race and racism. Now, I have talked about this enough times in my life to recognize a pattern. And the pattern I see is basically the legitimation of black race. And that is reasonable. It's something we've done before. We all kind of understand the politics of black rage. And rage is not something that is unique to black people. And racism isn't the only thing that makes people enraged. But it is a particular kind of thing that we've gotten used to in America. Black people are hurt. Somebody represents black people to say how hurt they are. And certain demands are made, certain pleas are made, certain apologies are made. And sometimes they're not enough, and sometimes they are. But in the end, there's two things that we need. And I want to talk about those two things. There's curing, and there is healing. And both of them are necessary for a complete solution, so that we get beyond the situation that we're in right now. And they're different, but they're two aspects of the solution that we need. And part of the difficulty of this becoming a problem over and over again is that sometimes we demand curing from people who can't cure, and sometimes we demand healing from people who can't heal. And I don't mean... I'm demanding, it's like, it's like going to a liquor store and expecting the person behind the counter to be a priest. You're in the wrong place asking for the wrong thing and banging on the counter is not going to help. You have to go to the place where the healing and curing is appropriate. Now, I'm going to try to stay away from analogies and metaphors because they're difficult. Uh, every analogy fails at some point, but there is one that I think helps, and I might use one or two of them. And the one that 
first gets in my mind here when we're talking about the solution to racism is in the matter of equality. Because all of us Americans want some kind of success and we're all pushing forward. Let's say we're moving down a particular street and we know our goal is at the end of that street and we come to a bump in the road. And so it's like getting hit by a bus. We're not all equal. We're all trying to get to the same place. In America, there's only so many streets, but they're all in America. So you have to go down one of those streets and you're a black person and you get hit by a bus. And now your trip is interrupted and you're injured and you're angry. And you realize as you're sitting there on the curb, that everybody's moving right past you. And that was a white man driving that bus. And you're angry at that white man. And he's gone. He's on his way. And I was going to take that bus, but now the bus hit me. I thought that was my way to success. And now I'm sitting here bleeding. And I, I swear I'm going to get there, but you got to acknowledge my pain. I have been injured. That's what race feels like because we're all Americans and all these streets are American and that's the path you might take a different street but when we talk about equality we talk about black folks not having a head start that's what it feels like like I was going to get on that bus to success and instead it ran me over and that's the pain a lot of people are feeling. And it's not because somebody stepped on their neck, but we are empathetic people and we recognize when somebody's being hurt unfairly. And of course, that brings up anger. It brings up sympathy. It brings up calls for justice. And that's what we all do. All responsible people will do that. We're human beings. We all feel that pain. We know anybody who watches a certain drama, their eyes will fill with tears. We, we, we know that. We know that. Everybody knows that. So everybody can feel that pain. But then everybody starts explaining. Well, this is why that happened. This is why that bus hit me. It's because that base, that white bus driver was racist. He had it out for me. He saw me there. He saw me coming. He knew I wanted to get on the bus, but he hit me. Now I'm sitting here with a busted leg. I'm gonna be hobbled for the rest of my life, maybe. I don't know. What I need is a cure. I need to be healed. But in the moment, and right now America's in the moment, we're angry and we're pointing the fingers of blame and we feel sorry for ourselves and we're looking at opportunities that we're missing right now. And we know we're not all equal traveling down the street. Some of y'all are flying overhead in jets. That man over there, he's been sitting here for 10 years, homeless on the street. He's never going to get there. But we all go down our own street. And sometimes we're in competition. We, sometimes we, we don't go at our own pace. Something happened to us, unfortunately, and we can't run. We can't run as fast as we want to. And some of us don't even believe there's success down the end of that road. See how far this analogy goes? I hope it's useful. But when you have a busted leg, you need a cure. You need therapy. You need a doctor. And guess what? This being America, 
There's lots of doctors who know how to cure busted legs. Okay? You're going to walk again, son. That's what they said. I'm going to set this bone. It's going to be hard. It's going to be painful. And there may be some way we can ease that pain, but it's still going to be painful. And when you're in that cast, it's going to itch. And you're going to walk around on crutches and people are going to look at you funny. And some people may be sympathetic, but you have a busted leg and it's got to be fixed. You have to be cured. Okay. Well, you know where to get the cure. Because you're still trying to get down that road to success. You can't quit. You got to get back up and go. And as much as you want the mob to stop that bus, there's another bus coming. America's not broken. Bus may not be coming on a regular schedule. You may miss the bus again. You may be late to your success, but it's still down that road. So now you're limping, you're getting a little bit better, getting better with the crutches. You're still handicapped. People are cracking jokes at you, but you're getting love. And you're like, okay, I'm going to get there sooner or later. And that has to take some faith on your part and some individual effort and a little bit of assistance. But you're not healed yet. You're still angry at that bus driver. You still want revenge. You start looking at other bus drivers like, I bet you hit somebody before, didn't you? You're not such a good driver. I bet I could drive better than you. But you don't volunteer to be a bus driver. You don't want to do that job. That's not your job. That's not what success is to you. All right? But you can look and say, I know you're not doing your job. I don't even know how you got to be a bus driver. You know? That's wrong. Let me slide over to another analogy. And that analogy is football. And it's one I think we all understand. That we're in competition because we want to be the best. If you want to be the best, you have to compete. You're not the only one. And sometimes competition is brutal. And sometimes it's fierce. It's a game. And you have to work out. You have to put on the uniform. You have to get energy from your teammates. You have to be coached. And then you get out on that playing field. And you follow the rules. And you compete with your rivals. You're wearing one color jersey, they're wearing another color jersey, but you're playing the same game. Some of your teammates are very capable, some of your teammates are a little less capable, but everybody's out there trying to win for their side. Now, any of you who are football fans, who are as old as me, know what happened to a quarterback named Joe Theismann. And if you really know, and if you saw it, you're probably cringing right now. You're just like, oh, that ain't football. Well, if you didn't know, what happened was that quarterback got tackled so hard that his leg bent backwards. And it was ugly to watch. It was very painful. And sometimes the competition gets too fierce. Sometimes by accident, and sometimes they're just dirty players. And when that happens, it's not, it's not a good game anymore. All right? Now, a good sportsman, a good person who recognizes that he's competing, and it's gone a little bit too far, while the other player is being taken care of, they take a knee. That's a very respectful thing to do. It says, I see here that this game has gone out of hand. I know I have my job. 
And my job is to tackle that guy, to get him, to stop him from moving forward. And that's part of the rules that we all agreed on. It's competition. But sometimes without breaking the rules and sometimes with breaking the rules, something goes horribly wrong. And somebody gets carried off the field. And the respectful thing to do is say, we're going to take a knee for a moment and recognize that's not supposed to happen. Okay? And that's the respectful thing to do. Even in boxing, even in MMA, if you knock somebody out, yeah, you're trying to knock them out. But sometimes they don't get up. It's good for you to take a knee. And it says, I respect the game that we're playing here. And I understand something that's gone a little bit wrong, or maybe a lot wrong. So that's the second analogy. And while that person is laid out on the stretcher, you could give them a hug and say, yeah, I beat you down. I was supposed to, but I respect that you got in the ring with me. But what you don't do is you don't curse the playing field. You don't say, oh, this whole thing is rigged. I don't even know why I was here in the first place. There's no way I could win. That's not being a good sport. That's pissing on your own shoes. That's a, a bad, sometimes things happen for no good reason, accident, and it's a tragedy. Take a knee. I understand that. But don't say the whole game is rigged. Because you're not the last person that's going to play. You're not the first person that's going to play. And the rules get amended. They change a little bit as time goes by. But everybody knows. You don't have to empty the stands and have a riot. In baseball, sometimes they do that. You get hit with a pitch. Both teams come out. It's rage. Everybody knows the rage. Everybody knows the politics of rage. Everybody knows that sometimes... Somebody goes too far. And you have to acknowledge that. And when you acknowledge that, when you take that knee, when you show the respect to the person who's been unfairly beat down, that is part of the healing. But it's up to the individual. The individual has to be healed in their heart. So maybe you go to church Maybe you sit and talk with your family. Maybe you go to therapy. Maybe you take a vacation. Maybe you do some running. Get stronger. But you have to care for your spirit. And your spirit has to be cared for. Because you may have a busted leg. But if you have a broken heart, fixing that leg is not going to fix you. So there are doctors don't go to the liquor store and try to drown the pain because if the leg ain't set right, you ain't going to walk right. So go to the person who does the cure. If somebody steals your money, you're not cured until you get your money back. And if you still hate the person that was the reason for your injury, you're not healed. Now, like a lot of people, we've talked about reparations for slavery. And if we said, oh, if we had all that money, everything would be okay. And a lot of us make a lot more money than our great-grandparents did. As far as they're concerned, we're cured. You know, W.E.B. Du Bois talked about the Talented Tenth. Really, all he was talking about was people who go to college. That's who he expected the talented tenth to be. Well, there's more than a tenth of us. We're cured. We wanted to go to school in the same schools as everybody else, same public schools. That's been cured. You have to acknowledge it. You got two legs to walk on, and your leg ain't busted. So walk on. Head down that road to success. You're cured. But some of us, 
still have pain in our hearts and we're angry and when we see somebody else get hit by the bus like we got hit by the bus it brings back all that pain again and our eyes fill with tears and we watch that video and it hurts it hurts anybody with sympathy it hurts anybody with a heart and you say my heart is broken And just thinking about it gives you pain. And it's right to be sympathetic. And it's right to feel the pain. But you got to heal. You got to wipe those tears from your eyes. You have to take a breath. Get control of yourself. Because everybody's watching. And you have to be a dignified person. And you have to thank God that wasn't me. And I'm okay. And I'm going to keep going down my road. There's nothing that's going to stop me. But whatever it takes, you have to be healed. Your spirit has to be strong. You have to get back up on your feet. And then you have to take a direction and head down that direction. You have to have your spirit intact. And when you're healed, you've been through it. All right? I've been through it. I just felt some pain. I'm not the only one who feels pain, but I feel my pain. And I'm dealing with it because I have to perform. And I'm not going to let that thing that happened as horrible as it was, stop me now. Ain't nothing stopping me now. I'm healed. I got two legs. None of them are busted. They may not be as good as they used to be when I was 20. When I used to have a left knee and a right knee, now I got a good knee and a bad knee. But at my knees, I'm in control. I know how to walk. I got the directions. I have the map. I got a plan. I'm moving forward. That's history. History is important. But every time I hear about the Civil War, I don't break down and cry. Every time I hear about World War II, I don't break down and cry. Sometimes I have a moment, Memorial Day, when I have to take a knee out of respect. It's a regular thing to do. It's part of the ongoing process of all of us healing ourselves, of reminding ourselves of the struggles that we have to go through to get down to that road of success. We share it. So today, my leg is intact, is good. My spirit is whole, I'm good. I get on the bus. Oh, it's a white bus driver. Good day to you, sir. Thank you for getting this. Here's my money, I'm on. I'll sit where I like too, by the way. And I'm on my way. I'm moving forward. I'm not pretending that I'm still sitting on the curb with a busted leg. I'm beyond that. I have been healed. I have been cured. I'm moving forward. Now, I could say all kinds of if I could have, would have, should have. Man, I should have Ask my mother for a ride, or man, I wish I was born with a Ferrari. Man, somebody else who came after me beat me. That's just self doubt. So, in summation, we as a nation have been down this road before, and we're not going to be the last ones. And we talk about race and racism. The politics of rage are the same, always. You're a racist. Oh, you calling me a racist? Well, you are. And you're not going to be right until you recognize that you are. Well, that's just analysis. That's stopping the clock on the field and having the judges go back and forward. But the game has to move on. You can't have a timeout because life continues. 
You take a knee, you take a timeout, you do some analysis. But now we're in analysis paralysis. We're trying to figure out what was the situation that caused the person to put their foot in that particular angle at that particular moment. Let's do the slow down camera. Let's play that Joe Theismann getting his leg broke again. The game would never, would never progress if all we did was concentrate on the worst failures. We'd never be healed. We keep replaying that same thing and it would make us cry every time and we'd be sitting at home crying all the time, acting like there's no future. There's a future. I've seen it. I've been through it. Like I said, we've all been through this road. Some of you, it's the first time. Get used to it. Find out how you get cured. Know how you can heal. Now I'm going to say something as an old black man because I got a bad knee. Sometimes I'm insensitive. I said, boy, you stop sitting there crying. And I have. And I know in my generation, we had our problems. And we healed them a certain way. And we cured them a certain way. And marching was effective. But this is a new kind of street. Maybe marching is not the most effective way. Maybe getting some angry black person on a camera screaming about how this is injustice and we can't have peace. That's, that's at least 30 years old. Maybe there's a new way. But you're still a human being, so you're always going to need to be cured. You're always going to need to be healed. And when it comes to talking about this particular act of police brutality, you weren't there. The knee was not on your neck. You don't need a cure. And if you think you need a cure, then you need to talk to your local police officer. And make peace with that person. Have a donut with them. Everybody loves donuts, not just cops. So sit down and have a donut with a cop. Okay? That's part of the healing process because you haven't been injured. Your leg is not busted. You can breathe. Don't tell me you can't breathe. That symbolic mess that puts you in the face, in the place of a victim that you're not. Yeah, it reminds you of something that happened to you when you watched that video. Okay, you watched the video, you took your knee, you paid respect. Keep moving. Move forward. So for all of you who are grinding in the same place, still watching the instant replay, that's not going to help you cure. And it's not going to help you heal. In fact, it might put some poison in your heart so that you never heal. So you always stay angry at the man. So you're always giving a side eye to every bus driver you meet for the rest of your life. Your spirit ain't right. You better get right. Because we don't have patience for that. We got new generations coming along and you giving 10-year-olds a sign to, I must be afraid of police for the rest of my life. Still in their future. That's the sign of a broken spirit. And that spirit cannot lead. So admit, I've been hurt, but now I'm strong. I've been broken, but now I'm whole. And I'm going to move forward. And can't nobody put me down. Because I've seen it before. And I know what to avoid. I'm not going to make the same mistakes. And I hope you don't make the same mistakes. So, God bless you all. And keep pushing on your road. Thank you for listening to American Wag. Join us again, won't you?